Yep, this is me cutting a crib in half for a good reason, I think. Well, let's rewind. Have you noticed the older your kids get, their toys get bigger, which is kind of an issue with toy storage solutions. I am not looking to buy more cube shelves or more toy storage that is just not gonna last. Our toys don't fit in them anymore. My kids are currently four and seven, and to find a shelf that fits all their toys can be difficult. I will be building an adjustable toy shelf that will grow with them, meaning it will fit the larger toys and even the small toys, because all you have to do is adjust the shelf. Adjustable equals flexibility. I will be building an adjustable toy shelf using a crib and wait for it, and a wine rack. 95 of this will be made from free items that I have gathered. The wine rack was free from... I found something on the Nextdoor app and it's free. It's this wine rack right here. I love wine, don't get me wrong. But I'm not gonna use it as a wine rack. I am thinking of upcycling it. I don't know, I really like the curves on it. I feel like it could be like a pretty decorative trim, maybe? My son has outgrown his crib. He's not a baby anymore. You're not a baby anymore, huh? Mm -mm. Are you baby or are you big? I'm big. Are you a big boy? But since the crib has many bite marks and just the condition's not great to pass forward, I am going to take apart the crib and actually use it to build my adjustable toy shelf. My original plan was to make this toy shelf with basic wood, either from a hardware store or from my scrap wood pile. But as we were getting ready to discard our crib, I realized that the crib was actually perfect for this project. The crib railings are evenly spaced. There is two inches in between each rail, two inches here, two inches there, two inches evenly spaced everywhere. Yay! Having the crib rails be evenly spaced makes it easier because when I adjust the shelves up or down, I know it will be leveled. So sometimes I think, sometimes. <laughs> Before building the shelves, there are things that I have to make sure I include. One, it has to be adjustable. The shelves can go up, go down, so it can fit all the toys. I want to be aesthetically pleasing. Our playroom is downstairs. It's a place that you can't really ignore. <laughs> if you're in the kitchen, you see it. If you're in the living room, you see it. Have a toy shelf that is inviting and not cluttered so they don't get overwhelmed. Let's get started. I cut the crib in half with a table saw. Then I cut some of the top off to make sure this toy shelf will fit in the playroom area accordingly. And of course, I am saving these pieces for future projects. Knowing me, I can find a way to reuse them. Even if my husband disagrees and says I keep way too many scrap wood pieces. Remember to sand after you cut to keep your project smooth. I went to my scrap wood pile and searched for any large pieces that could help support the structure of this toy shelf. This will be the top piece of the shelf. It will help connect and hold the two crib rails from the top. I first added wood glue, clamp the pieces together, then use the brad nailer to secure it all. All the materials I used, I have linked it down below. I have been using all my tools for more than three years now and I highly recommend them, especially if you're also learning how to DIY at home like me. Back to my scrap wood pile, I found more wood that can help support the back of the toy shelf. Some of these pieces of wood are from previous projects. This used to be a picture ledge, but we did not need it anymore. So now it'll help support the back of our toy shelf. This used to be a wall shelf in our living room, but now it'll be part of the toy shelf. As you can see, the wood pieces are not all the same sizes, but I plan on placing a thin board on top of them to have a smoother backing for the toy shelf. I highly, highly recommend using a speed square in all of your projects. It helps to make sure your projects are even. I am adding a small piece of wood here to help support the toy shelf on the bottom. I wanted to make sure it had a base that touched the ground on both sides. 
Because I use a lot of scrap wood, a lot of times my DIY projects are like a game of Tetris. I move around many pieces of wood and hope for the best. It's all about being creative with what you have. I hired a little helper in this part of the project. She provided some good company, but also some judgment. Here are the thinner pieces of wood that I found that can be good for the backing of this toy shelf. Moments like this, I wish I could just purchase a long uniformed wood piece, but I am trying to use up the scrap wood I have and get creative with it. I am now measuring the width of the back and will be cutting my thin pieces of wood with a table saw. If you are enjoying this, I would really appreciate it if you could like this video and hit the subscribe button. Thank you! These boards are shorter, so I'm using a miter saw to cut them. This Gorilla wood glue has been working for this wood piece, but for the smaller pieces, not so much, which was kind of annoying. I think it's because it's a type of hardboard or fiber board. So instead I used this specific Gorilla Glue and setting this board on top with weights or anything heavy I can find to help it really adhere to the back of the wood structure. It's time to make the shelves. First, I am measuring the width and length of the toy shelf. I found this large piece of wood on the Nextdoor app. The previous owner used it as a built-in desk but I am going to cut it up and make it a shelf for this DIY toy shelf. Obviously, I will not need this top piece of the desk where the circle is, so I'm going to cut that piece off. When I turn this piece of wood around, you can see that there is a thick piece on the bottom that we also don't need, so I will be cutting that as well. I didn't notice this, but as you can see here, there's like a little divot with the crib. I have to cut a little bit on the ends on one side of each shelf so it can slide in perfectly. I am also cutting this old Ikea table. I am cutting and removing the side where there is a circular spot where you would attach the table legs. Obviously, we don't need that for the shelves. The table is pretty lightweight and I realize why, because it looks like this inside. I was surprised. The inside is not really appealing. To cover it up, I used a thin piece of wood and glued it on with wood glue. Once it dries, I fill any spaces or creases with wood filler. I painted my shelves this beautiful sage green, and then decided to use leftover contact paper that I had laying around. To be honest, I got lazy and did not want to sand, prime, and paint the bottom parts of these shelves anymore. It's time to transform this free wine rack into decorative trim. How beautiful are these pieces? When I first saw them, I immediately thought this would be a beautiful scallop trim. So sorry the audio is not great in the next scene. So I added captions. Thanks for sticking around. So this is the line rack. It's actually nice because the person disassembled it for me. The main reason I wanted the line rack was because of the curves here that's supposed to hold your wine. It's just this beautiful trim. I feel like it could just be so pretty on like so many different upcycle DIYs. There are some minor wide stakes, but nothing paint can fix. I will be cutting the ends of these pieces. The challenge was to find where exactly to cut my wood pieces so it would match up with the other piece of wood. The reason why I am matching two pieces of wood together is because I am creating a scallop border that will wrap around the toy shelf. One piece of this is not tall enough nor wide enough to wrap around the shelf. The next part was probably the most challenging part of this whole DIY. Attaching two pieces of this wood was quite a challenge. First, I added wood glue and clamped both pieces together. The key here is patience and a clamp. I wish I had one clamp that was long enough to attach the two pieces, but I didn't. So I had to makeshift it with three different clamps. I consider this a DIY hack, right? How will the shelves adjust up and down with the scallop trim? With magnets. Not only can you remove the shelves and adjust them to your liking, but the scallop trim around the toy shelf is also removable. I am attaching these magnets using this Forstner bit set because I want the magnet to be flush and not visibly stick out. Again, I am using this specific Gorilla Glue. It works for virtually everything. Now here is a real DIY hack. This hack involves having lipstick in your toolbox. To help me perfectly align the magnets from the scallop trim to the crib, 
I marked the magnets with lipstick. Who knew lipstick would be so helpful in building a toy shelf? We are in the finishing stages, and it's time to whip out the spray shelter tent and paint this toy shelf. I am painting all of it sage green, and I think it's going to look perfect in the kids' playroom. Sometimes I stop and think, wow, am I really using an old grip to make a toy shelf? Yep. I sure am. I am so happy to finally have a toy storage shelf that will grow with the kids and their toys. I love that I can adjust the shelves accordingly, no matter how big or small their toys are. See you next time for another fun DIY that you and I can do together. Yes, you can DIY too. Everyone can.